I once worked with this woman who, after 20 years of marriage and an extremely ugly divorce, was finally ready for her first date. She had met this guy online, and he seemed nice, and he seemed successful, and so she was very excited. She bought a new dress, and they met at an upscale New York City bar for a drink. Ten minutes into the date, the man stands up and says, "I'm not interested," and walks out. The woman was so hurt she couldn't move. All she could do was call a friend. And here's what the friend said: "Well, what do you expect? You have big hips. You have nothing interesting to say. Why would a handsome, successful man like that ever go out with a loser like you? Shocking, right? That a friend can be so cruel. But it would be much less shocking if I told you it wasn't the friend who said that. It's what the woman said to herself." You are friendly. Life taught you that living without friends would be not only tough and sad, but also a sure recipe for disaster. You probably don't know that more important than being somebody's friend is to be your own best friend. This is your friend Amelia, and today we learn loving ourselves as a basic survival tool. In Adlerian psychology, are known the so-called life tasks, universal challenges that, given human condition, every one of us must tackle. These tasks are as follows: work, friendship, intimacy, spirituality, and, of course, the self. The relationship that each of us must develop with oneself in order to preserve and multiply our chances of survival and success. There are moments when the concept of loving and protecting oneself can be unclear and could interfere with other common sense principles like loving others or keeping away from danger. For instance, it's not easy to figure out if going to the woods for adventure, relaxation, and exercise—it's always a great idea and a genuine proof of self-love. What about bears, wolves, and facing the unleashed elements of nature? Moreover, it's not clear if saving a child from a burning house equals a wise attitude toward oneself. Fortunately, that kind of ethical dilemmas are rather rare, but we still need to clarify what really means to develop a healthy relationship with oneself. In the Adlerian psychology, this life task involves taking care of oneself physically, emotionally, socially, and of course, spiritually, as follows. Physically, from a physical standpoint, taking care of oneself means keeping our body away from danger and avoiding risky or irresponsible behavior. For instance, sedentarism, lack of moderation, experimentation with drugs, disregard for the consequences of our choices, are actual proofs of not holding a healthy attitude toward oneself. Emotionally, showing trust and support for oneself in moments when others may push us away or when our abilities seem to betray us represents a true proof of self-love. When nobody else cares, we should be the ones who remind ourselves the great things we are capable of, pointing out the opportunities around us. Socially, for the most part, social self-care means making a careful selection of the people we spend time with. Sometimes, with the friends we invite into our lives, dangerous things like addiction, vice, and risky conduct. 
Allowing people to take advantage of your time, money and other resources may not be a good proof of friendship with oneself. On the other hand, there's a boomerang effect at work in relationships and granting respect, honesty and understanding, which are some of the most important interpersonal skills, are in fact ways of cultivating a relationship with oneself. At times being able to get by without any outside support, if this isn't available or is available but risky, represents another form of loving and taking care of oneself. Spiritually, being your own best friend from a spiritual standpoint means finding a meaning of life and selecting the set of values that could provide oneself with a safer experience of living. Most likely, courage, moderation, cooperation, discipline, hard work are more profitable on a long run than excess, isolation, messiness, and dishonesty. Also, in social life, understanding and diplomacy could help you more than perfectionism and intolerance. In cultivating a positive relationship with oneself, the inner speech or self-talk is a fundamental way of assessing the functionality of such a relationship. Do we yell insults to oneself or on the contrary, show respect, emotional support, and understanding? Nevertheless, sometimes a good proof of care for oneself is to listen and learn from the internal critic. Cultivating a positive relationship with oneself involves almost the same things as cultivating a positive relationship with any other person. It's a process that entails practicing respect and consideration, diplomacy and even pointing out and acknowledging our own risky or irrational behavior if the case. At times, taking our time and granting oneself little treats or moments of intimacy with oneself represent good ways of showing love and care for oneself.